Hey guys, welcome to Finally Clicked, the podcast where we discuss business, leadership, and personal development. My name is Margaret Smith, and I'm the Director of Operations for Pickett Street Properties, a real estate team out of Bothell, Washington. And I'll be here every week with our owner and team leader, Jesse D. Moore. We'll be digging into concepts and ideas that have helped us both personally and professionally. And you'll also get a chance to hear from local and national experts that we know provide massive value to get to the point where it all finally clicks. Welcome to another sunshiny day here in Seattle, Washington, and another episode of Finally Clicked with your hosts, Jesse D. Moore and Margaret M. Smith. Do you live in an augmented reality <laughs> where it's not foggy and gray outside? I think I'm just trying to manifest some sunshine <laughs> and thinking it might work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not so sunshiny. much fun talking It's to actually extremely foggy. Don't live in reality. <laughs> it's like San Francisco here. Which is actually a bummer because I went to breakfast this morning in downtown Seattle. Mm-hmm. And if it had been clear, it would have been I would have probably been sweating because I don't love heights, but it would have been an amazing You view. went to the Columbia Tower? Mm-hmm. Did you go, oh my God. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did you go to the bathroom there? No. The girls, the women's bathroom at the Columbia Tower at the- uh, Oh, well, shoot. Columbia Tower Club uh-huh. as like uh, the best view. From the wind, oh from the bathroom. God. Well, I wouldn't have been able to see anything because I want to say they might just... have a glass floor on one stall. Shut <laughs> up. Well, now I I'm going to so. have to tell this lady I need to come back. I can't. I mean, I haven't been in the women's bathroom. Holy crap. In the Literally Columbia Tower Club. But, okay. but there is, I know legit it has a great view. Yeah. And then I think one of the stalls. All right. Well, I'll get us floor. an invite back um, because I couldn't see a damn thing. When I went up there, all I saw was white because the fog was just pressing in on the window. So it didn't even look like we were anywhere. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah, no, it's not sunshiny here, folks. It's very much foggy and cold and moist. (laughs) (laughs) It's not a word we use ever. Happy February. But you know what? Is it tomorrow? Happy February. (laughs) Tomorrow's March 1st. (laughs) I like, I got, I had another, I have another Americano this morning. So this stuff is just hyping me. And we were going to do ASMR <laughs> and um, they're doing construction next door. So <laughs> it'd be like, welcome to another episode. <laughs> this is a really good representation. Yeah. And so we decided not to do ASMR. So this is our um, so- sober, Completely sober, sober morning episode. Mm-hmm. Summer, sober, pre-lunch, pre-funk <laughs> episode. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to talk about random things, so just settle in. Settle in. Settle in. Think about... Grab a cup of tea. Think about your hips and let them relax. (laughs) (laughs) Let the the worry and anxiety... Now that you say that, actually... Let the worry and anxiety... (laughs) Sound like a meditation. I got uh, one of those... Sweep out your legs. Oh, my God. So from this guy that I was semi-dating for a while, I got this circle wheel thing i think you may have seen it when i brought it in one day and it's um, do you steal it or buy it off a <laughs> is it stolen merch possibly yeah uh but you put it behind you and then you roll up on it and i can't relax my hips it's like i've realized oh, i yeah. have a problem it's like a wheel but it's three quarters of a wheel kind of thing i don't know the f- that it's all one circle mm. and you roll oh, it back is. on it yeah mm. but when i'm up on the top i can't relax my hips it's like a serious thing <clears throat> i gotta do more yoga like what happens if you would if pain. you were to relax your hips? pain pain it feels like they could break huh. yeah I'm, I'm just too i'm super tight i think i'm just <laughs> sharing that with the folks <laughs> that are listening i'm really tight <laughs> good <laughs> good for you i am gonna change the subject um Margaret just got back from a self-care retreat where she spent three days offline. No good with the yawning this morning. I am so yawny today. I'm so sorry. Did you work out this morning? I did. I did not want to get up nice this morning. Nice job. I got up at 5.15 and uh, I texted my trainer and Cody, who I work out with, and I'm like, see you guys soon? Question mark. As if to say, maybe we should sleep in, but... 
no one got back to me. Cody was still like 15 minutes late though. So, <laughs> but he had to hustle. He got an uh, hour workout in in 45 minutes. Oh, jeez. Um, my point going back to your self care retreat. So you <laughs> once a year you try to take a few days to yourself. No Instagram. No email. No text messages. No communication. Really outside of your outside cabin, of, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, you did that. I did it. And how do you feel? It was good. It was not uh, so typically. And so I've only done this one other time. So I'm not by. I'm. I'm not like this is not typical or normal yet for me. Um, and last year I did it completely by myself. This year I could not do it financially completely by myself. So. A friend invited me to her parents' cabin in the middle of Idaho, Fairfield, Idaho. Um, and the whole idea was I told her, I was like, look, normally I would do this by myself. Um, so I'm just going to like – she was like, she's really great actually about setting expectations. It's something that their family does. And I was like, this is super healthy. So she said before I came, she said, tell me what your expectations are for your time here just so I'm aware what you expect to get out of this. And I said, oh, my God. Nobody ever asks me that. So it was great. I told her, I expect that you will do whatever you want to do, and I will do whatever I want to do whenever I feel like it. And if you're going to go skiing, if I feel like going skiing, I'll come with you. If I don't, I won't. And so it was fantastic. So we had all day. I flew out, got there Thursday, had all day Friday and Saturday, left Sunday. And so it was a lot of sleeping, lounging, reading, meditation, journaling, eating charcuterie board all day long. And then she loves to cook, so she made some great food and it was awesome so basically you found someone <laughs> to let you sit at their <laughs> parents cabin yeah for free or cheaply yeah and then they also were your personal chef she said welcome to the bed and breakfast basically wow. of house to tori yeah well, well done <laughs> thanks i know you always make fun of me for that and too. Then I, I can just imagine margaret <laughs> <laughs> okay hold on hold on Dear journal, <laughs> it's morning now. <laughs> I'm in my PJs with a warm cup of coffee. Uh -huh. Thinking about manners <laughs> and my life and this year and the podcast and love. <laughs> and she let me stay in the master suite. But most suite. of all, be you. <laughs> she let stay, me stay in the, in the master, master suite. <laughs> Find people who give you stuff for free. <laughs> And we'll cook for you. Wait on you, hand and foot. Make them your friends. Blog about them. Post about them. Hashtag them. Hashtag self care. Hashtag <laughs> crispy or bacon, please. <laughs> hashtag. She, she made me the most lovely. My journal is my best friend. Toast. Oh, toast. hashtag avocado toast. It was so hashtag delicious. Hashtag the bomb. Yeah, well, and you came back, and uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say, like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a time. Maybe you don't vacation well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a time where you went on vacation and came back and were like, perfect, exactly what I needed. <laughs> like, you know what? I'm so ready to get back to work. Let's do this. Let's get going. Let's get into it. It it never goes that way. Not one time. I can't think of one time. Can you think of one time? I think I might have to take a longer break. It's Here's what it is. It's always, oh my God, I could use it. I, I could so use a longer vacation. It like, it doesn't matter how long it is. It's like, oh, it was good, but I'm exhausted. <laughs> I could use more. <laughs> and it's so defeating as a boss. You're Aww. like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it's not always easy when I'm gone. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> while you were gone. So you left. You took Thursday and Friday off. Uh, I started my no contact order at Thursday, Thursday at noon. noon. <laughs> Everybody knew. Right. Jaggles was doing a countdown. T minus 13 hours yeah. till I can't so talk to you Thursday anymore. at noon. Our credit card stopped working at about <laughs> Thursday at 12.05 p.m. <laughs> and I had to log into your com – I had to go to your computer <laughs> thinking I would hack some things and it would be easier. And it was a nightmare. That was the original OG. Uh, fixed that, but it took forever. And then uh, what's the other thing that happened? 
before. Oh, uh, so we had a listing come on the market kind of in a rush. On Friday, yeah. And um, we didn't have a designer. Uh, my graphic designer wasn't available. And so we have a backup, but I don't know where that information is. You have that information. And so then it it was like, uh, where is Carmen San Diego <laughs> looking for this <laughs> person's contact information? And so, yeah, I was pulling my hair out for sure. And it's just so funny, right? Like, because I don't feel like I rely on you that much. Like, I don't I don't feel like I'm like, hey, Margaret. I don't say, hey, Margaret, like 10 times a day. Well, because you don't have to anymore. Right. It's good. So this then, is this is I think this is also showing like transition with with Jaggles like it's her first couple she's been alone now a couple right. times without me and so every time something new gets discovered and yeah. makes our processes better so now we'll make sure Alex's information is somewhere totally accessible Carmen San Diego I like that yeah yeah mm. well welcome back thank you I wish you could come back with like your journal notes and just read <laughs> how I should have read from your journal oh my god from your self care do you have it here uh, no I have it at home I could bring it oh uh, yeah yeah next time maybe I'll read from it that would be highly entertaining dear journal I had lunch today at the <laughs> local pub I met a delightful man he said I was beautiful <laughs> I never left the house if I met a man out there it'd be probably it'd be a farmer there's only Dear a couple journal. Of farmers out there. I met a mailman today. <laughs> came to the door. Yeah, their mailman did come to the door, actually. His calves were glistening. Oh, God. Yeah. In the light of the reflecting sun off the snowbanks. <laughs> oh, God. I took the newspaper with care. And unfurled it in front of my avocado I toast. I got to start writing my book. That was too much information. <laughs> oh, God. Hmm. Hmm. Avocado toast like every day? I asked for it every day after Friday. Oh, she made it? Sunday, and Saturday and like... Sunday. It's a sourdough bread with an avocado spread, a beet spread, arugula, garlic salt, two eggs, easy over, and then some garlic salt and pepper on top. Oh my God! Where's the avocado at? On the very bottom. On oh, the very bottom. Mm -hmm. So delicious. Wow. Thinking about you it. You pick now. it up or you use a fork. A fork and knife. Yeah, it's too messy. Fork and knife. We're trying to be polite. Are the eggs runny at all, or is just it slightly? Just She's slightly. very good at making like, like medium. The, you would like her eggs mm -hmm. medium, a little bit of run, but yeah. Oh, God, just thinking about it. I have to make some this weekend. Life is like avocado toast sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little messy. Oh, God. I should have had something else to eat probably before this. Before this? Yeah. Before our podcast? My tummy is just... I have five shots of espresso <laughs> running through me. You do five? Well, I did a protein shake. Uh, my new breakfast is this protein shake with um, two shots of espresso. I feel like my eyes are trying to leave my <laughs> face. Um, so <laughs> then uh, when I got here, I like having a coffee at work, though, you know? <laughs> And Amanda was so nice to go out and do oh. a coffee run. But then she's like, do you do two shots or three? And I'm like, two's <laughs> plenty because I've already had two. So I'm on five espresso so she shots. she got you three? Oh, my God. Plus this protein <laughs> shake has green coffee in it. Oh, shit. Or, yeah, green coffee. Uh, so I'm just caffeinated to the gills right now. <laughs> I feel like caffeine has the opposite effect on you. It it does. You know what I do not like? I don't like your, uppers. Your eyes are like. I don't like uppers. I don't like things that. I'm already so amped up. It seems like it does the opposite for your body. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I get anxious. <laughs> I get anxious and all like verklempt. Oh, good word. Oh. <sighs> yes. I don't need to announce it right now, but yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> I yes, learned I learned a new word at breakfast that I told her I thanked this woman I had breakfast with because I was like, this is perfect. I can use this on the podcast today. What's the one? Jing. What? <laughs> it's called Jing, J-A-N-G. I'm going to go make some Jing. What is that? Let's go make the Jing. It's money, apparently. I was like, what? Jing? <laughs> and I said, you have to understand, this is like life-changing whenever I learn a new word that I can go use on Jesse. And she's like, oh yeah, go make the Jing. It sounds like a racial <laughs> slur. <laughs> I don't think I can use it. 
<laughs> I don't think that. I, I'm sure it's a. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's a racial slur. <laughs> and you should never say the, that word again. <laughs> you don't. You don't want to. You don't want to be in the news, Margaret. That would be the last thing I'd want. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, moving on from that. <laughs> You had a, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit today about a conversation that I overheard you having because uh, I have had the benefit of overhearing you have uh, coaching calls and things like that with people people over the years. Um, but what I actually love is when new people on the team hear you for the first time and they whip out their notebooks and they start taking notes. Yeah. So you were on a, the phone this week with a guy and telling him about our team and just kind of getting an idea of what his team was about. And you are all of a sudden explaining the difference between what an assistant looks like and what a TC does, a third party TC. And that's when Melissa Weidling whipped out her notebook and started taking notes because she has to give that exact same explanation to agents and she's learning her script. And so, and then I found out that Jessica and Amanda were both overhearing you too. And I have to tell you, I I think sometimes you don't realize how often like people love listening to you because of those scripts that come out of your mouth so naturally. Suddenly I'm realizing everybody can hear me within <laughs> about 50 feet. Well, your door was wide open. I know. Well, uh, this is this is a little <laughs> bit concerning. <laughs> people probably know way more about me than I realize. <laughs> yeah, no, I had a coaching call. It was fine. I forget sometimes like uh, how much I know. Yeah unless you teach somebody or coach somebody. And when it comes to building a team, like I have that pretty much down pat, Mm -hmm. I feel like. Mm -hmm. I know there's different ways to skin that cat, but it's so funny. Um, It's so funny from this perspective now because it's pretty obvious to me when you need to hire an assistant, when you need to hire a TC, when you need to hire a buyer's agent, like what the natural progression is of that. And it's sequential, not simultaneous, all of those steps. and uh, But it doesn't come as naturally to, to other people Mm-mm. or they haven't thought about it. Mm-hmm. I just think about a lot of stuff, I think. All the time. So. Yeah. No, it was, it was great to hear it. And I loved getting Melissa's feedback. She was like, God, as soon as he launched into that, I couldn't help myself. I just whipped out my notebook and... She said that the way that you describe it, which I agree has helped me describe it in my class, it's just, I think you're helping people understand um, the sequence of it and when, which is the most important piece because so many people don't understand the when things should happen. So anyhow, that was really, uh, that was funny to hear their feedback and yeah. Yeah, it was so funny that they, all three of them had, were listening (laughs) and they're like, I love that call. And I'm like, what are you talking (laughs) about? What, what car are you talking is about? Happening? Is my room bugged? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. can see you just like hitting the button. Yeah. Um, Everyone listen hey, in. L- team, listen up. <laughs> Jesse's about to make a phone call. Let's listen in. <laughs> and I'm. <laughs> oh my God, that's brilliant. I need to get one of those for your office. <laughs> yeah. Scripting right. practice is happening right now, like an intercom system. Oh, God. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm like. So, doctor, <laughs> is that mole? <laughs> I know it's hard to to get to, but is there anything to worry about? Uh, no. Well, oh, I'm man. glad. That's not it. Yeah, I enjoy it. It is fun coaching and teaching and especially about stuff that I know a thing or two about. It's fun. Uh, in relation to our coaching the program that we just started, somebody actually filled out the form um, a local admin who's actually not in real estate. And she just said, you know, when she gets to the part where it's like, why do you want to do this? Or how do you, you know, she said, I'm a Mo addict. And she said she almost didn't fill out the form because she saw your picture and your information. And she immediately got intimidated because she thought it was a, a co-coaching program. Like it would be both of us with her. <laughs> she was like, mm-hmm. and I said, why would you get intimidated? This would be, the, that would be like double the fun. Like, um, but it was, it was, it's so cool for me to get that feedback from someone who's not even in the industry because she understands the value that I would bring her. Um, it's not related to real estate specifically. It's related to just marketing, um, finding your voice, finding like your theme and your message for your clientele and who you're looking for. And so, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, I feel like I'm constantly telling you what I see about you. And I think, we, I mean, you recently I said yesterday, like, can we sometime have a conversation about what you see in me? Because I think sometimes you forget 
because you've had so much going on personally the last couple of years. Sometimes you forget how talented you are. Well, it's funny that I'm intimidating. That photo, I feel like that photo you took of me, you know, with me kind of laughing. Yeah, I think I don't that, think it's the photo at all. That's a very approachable photo. Oh, it's very approachable. No, I think it's primarily just because you are an executive and an owner. Mm-hmm. And that's that's people's first, I mean, you know. Big whoop. <laughs> so I make tough decisions and I suffer. And I like, suffer. <laughs> Like, well, you carry a lot of weight on your shoulders, and that um, is impressive, and it impresses people, which I guess sometimes people turn something that's impressive into intimidating, and we've had that conversation before. I no longer allow that stuff to intimidate me. I find it impressive, and it doesn't mean that it's not someone I should talk to or like be, okay, be open to. I want to be coached by those people, Yeah, but she hasn't gotten to that point yet. Yeah. Yeah, I think people would be well served to be coached by me, even admin. Admin. Hell yes. I can Hell coach yes. admin for sure. Totally. Makes me think of my upcoming talk at uh, the Pacific Northwest Admin Retreat. OMG. Talked yeah. Talked to you about that a little bit yesterday. Yeah. What I'm excited of, for it. What do you think of my topic? Well, I don't think there's anything better that you could talk about other than authenticity. And I uh, it, it just, you know, I've been doing a lot of reflection. Be you. Yes. I've been doing a lot of reflection and not just from my self-care retreat. But I think maybe, well, you understand this because you've been doing it for as long as I've known you, but you get to a certain point in business and maybe this happens when you've stayed with one business for this long, but you start to reflect on the changes that you've seen and the journey and the road that it's taken us down. And you said to me, you know, I never would have thought that I'd have an employee who's going around the country talking about authenticity and being themselves. (laughs) And uh, it also makes a lot of sense to me because you and I were very passionate about that about being the best versions of ourselves. And so I love that you're going to talk about that. And I, it'll speak. It spoke to people last year before you even knew you were going to be talking. And I know it'll speak super powerfully to the people that are, are going to be there this year. So I'm excited for it. I'm I thrilled. It won't be uh, – huh? how do I say this? I don't think it'll be about, like, the topic of authenticity. It'll be more about the difficult – like, the pros and cons of authenticity – like um, putting yourself in a place of awareness about your authenticity. Hmm. I have a lot of analogies and metaphors in my head about this. Um, and But, you know, as I've talked to people, um, I feel like that's this is the subject we need to talk about. Yeah. I'm hearing about it from lots of... Lots of different sources, lots of different people from different walks of life. And um, and people are becoming, for whatever reason, we're becoming less and less tolerant of yes. anything that takes us away from our natural mm-hmm. uh, inclinations. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, we're getting, it's, it's, we're, it, it makes us so uncomfortable now to pretend to be someone we're not, Mm -hmm. you know? And and I think there was a time where we had to do that no matter what. There was a time where future generations had to do it to pay the bills or to feed their family. Mm -hmm. And a lot has changed, and technology has changed so much in just the last 10 years, 11 years, Mm -hmm. that uh, we have different problems now than we used to have. And... And I I feel like life was scripted enough and there wasn't enough collaboration before the internet. To So let me explain this a little different way. <laughs> like so imagine before the internet, if you were a kid in Montana like myself, my entire experience was within these glass walls of this geographic area oh, yeah. I grew yeah. up in. It was extremely remote, so I was formed by my parents' ideology, their doctrine, their moral code. Mm -hmm. I was formed, as far as news goes, I was limited to a newspaper that we got a day late. Yeah. And... Very little exposure to the outside world. One TV channel. Yeah. Right? And And one radio station? Two radio stations, the Kick Country, the the country radio station (laughs) and the pop radio station. And some AM radio stations that no one listened to except for my parents. And um, anyway, who I became as a person and, and my philosophy for life came from that 
locked in geographic yeah. experience. Yeah. Right. And so I think I think it was more. I think when that was the case before the internet, it it was easier to control people. It was easier to say, this is how you're supposed to live your life. Oh, yeah. This is what has been successful. This is what will make you a valued member of our community. Mm-hmm. And uh, that included not being gay. Yeah. It included not being... Uh, a person of color that mm-hmm. included all sorts of things mm-hmm. that now that I'm not with the advent of the internet, it, uh, well, probably the best example is, the, you know, the Westboro um, Baptist church. They're, they're the people that um, like picket uh, okay. soldiers, funerals. <laughs> yes. And um, they're the gods. God hates. Yeah. Abortion um, or gays mm-hmm. group. Well, that's a, you know, that's a family lineage of pastors. That's a family where the the patriarchal father um, is the pastor and is the head of everything, right? Mm -hmm. And he's this dogma of uh, we're going to be militant against homosexuality. We're going to be militant against the things we don't believe in. To the point where we're going to protest American soldiers' funerals Mm -hmm. because... That's God reacting to um, our tolerance of homosexuality. Well, the granddaughter of that man, that patriarch, is on Twitter. And this guy just like kept talking to her on Twitter, Twitter challenging her beliefs. Wow. Challenging the way that her grandfather taught and believed and, how, and their actions. And over time... She started to listen and started to like challenge her thinking, and eventually she removed herself from that wow group and from that cult. And now she speaks. When did you follow this? Uh, I mean, she now speaks to on like news programs and interviews about like. Uh, I think we need to talk to her as a perspective, right? Like, because it's similar to my own yeah. to some degree. To some degree. Yeah. Please don't. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I see what you're the what you're. So anyway, at. as we struggle, I feel like there was a time in prior generations where it wasn't as accept as acceptable. Yes. To be authentic. Yes. Or to pursue whatever. Yes. Or maybe there weren't even options. Maybe you didn't even know there were options. Didn't even know there were options. Differently. Yeah. Well, we're in a time where, thanks to the reach of the internet and Netflix and everything. We have so much content available to us, so many different ideas available to us that we can basically be a blank slate and then start to discover where our interests are Mm -hmm. and where our passions are Mm -hmm. and move in that direction Mm -hmm. and kind of buck the trends and buck the Mm -hmm. social expectations Mm -hmm. and the moral platitudes and Mm -hmm. just figure out who we are in general. Now, I have to say, just because this made me think of this as you were talking I know a lot of different people that have moved from like the Midwest out here to Washington or, and I've, you know, that I've met throughout my life. But I have to say the difference between many of them and you is that you have opened yourself up to like what I know you're going to talk about at the retreat. You've been opened yourself up to making a mistake in order to learn um, what you now want to believe as the foundation for you Um, where other people aren't necessarily as open to possibly looking like a fool or feeling stupid or making a mistake or saying something wrong. Um, and so I just think there's, there's a difference between the people who really want, and you don't have to just be the Midwest to not have any perspective, but, um, well, Joe Rogan just talked about this recently on his podcast. It's so silly how much offense we take in being wrong. Yeah. Like if you say, Hey Jesse, Hey, I want to correct something you just said on the podcast because it's not true. Why should I be invested in that? that yeah. Why should I be invested in something that's not true? Yeah. Like, why do that's true? It's I like so, that. Like, it. it's so silly that we get offended, and mm-hmm. it's so silly that we care. Yeah. And when really, what we should what should matter is just the truth. Mm-hmm. And we can't possibly know everything. No. So what's the harm in in being able to say I don't? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. 
Yeah. Now I know this mm-hmm. is it. Mm-hmm. But um, that's not the case. So I have of these metaphors in my head about authenticity. The, the one that I kind of talked to you about was um, I went on a camping trip with friends last year. And these are friends I hang out with all the time, but we hang out quite a bit. But we haven't camped a bunch. We've camped a few times. And um, in that moment, I'm camping, and I've done this before. I'm comfortable doing it. I'm not uncomfortable doing it. I know how to do certain things. I kind of know. You're very familiar with yeah, yeah. what I'm supposed to do and not yeah. supposed to do. Yeah. And... Uh, What's funny is we were doing... Yeah, if you're stuck out in the middle of the country, you're someone most people would want to be with. Right. Because you know how to survive. Right, and I can change a tire, or, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so um, we're sitting around, we're doing s'mores with the kids, and there's like a loose uh, Reese's cup wrapper, right? And so I just kind of twist it up and I throw it in the fire. And it burns away in like <laughs> three seconds. And everyone went, what'd you just do? And I'm like... I burned the Reese's wrapper, you know, like, I, well, yeah, that released chemicals and off gases. Like, people were highly offended that I did this thing. And I get it. Like, we all know there's certain things you shouldn't do, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And in Montana, <laughs> I think, I feel like there's a lot of things you're not supposed to do that they do just because <laughs> who's watching? No one, no one cares. No one's here. Um, now I, no one like Montana wouldn't start a rubber tire on fire. Right. Yeah. But we would throw a paper plate in the fire. Yeah. Like it's kind of ridiculous. Like there's this like give and take culturally where things that make sense in the city don't make sense in the country Mm -hmm. and vice versa. So anyway, but in that moment, as I, I congregate and I fellowship with this group of people where we have like-minded interests and we have the same kind of basic expectations. I didn't have awareness until that I saw their reaction, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I did something that I would normally do most of the time mm-hmm. and was indifferent about it. Yeah. And certainly didn't expect any sort of this Feedback. level of response. Yeah. But I do it, and then by their reaction, I become aware, right? Yeah. And so um, my metaphor on awareness is that we're not usually looking for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it usually finds us. Finds us, yeah. right? I love that. And so, um, but we also have to put ourselves in a position to recognize that mm-hmm. because then we modify our behavior. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to throw something in the fire with these people. Mm-hmm. In fact, I won't probably throw something in the fire ever again mm-hmm. just for this <laughs> reason, right? Well, I actually, and then you went on to, to talk about another example, which I had never heard before. Having grown up Catholic, you had talked about you pray. You would pray for people in the Christian denomination that you grew up in. You would pray for people to be surrounded by thorn bushes, yeah, thorny yeah, bushes. Yeah. And I thought, oh, it's so interesting. I kind of like purposely put myself in the middle of thorns now, and I, you know, not in that same context, but um, it was just interesting. All the different images that came to my mind as you started talking about your examples that you're going to give. Well, for context, for awareness, what, what Margaret's talking about is I in the Christian faith where how I grew up. If you wanted to pray for an enemy or you wanted to pray for someone who was sinning actively, then you would pray that God would surround them with rose bushes. Yeah. Like basically make their life very uncomfortable <laughs> so that they have to like seek refuge in the church. Uh-huh. And uh, it's such a bizarre prayer in my head when I talk about it now. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that relates. How, how does that relate? What did well, you... I think of it. I'm, I think I'm relating it more to getting outside your comfort oh, zone. Oh, being uncomfortable. Because then you have, because yes. I, I want to stumble into as much that I'm, I know there's things I'm unaware of. I know I have unaware. Oh, and we all have things we know we should do and we don't do them. Mm-hmm. And it's because comfort is mm-hmm. compelling. Comfort is the best. It is very compelling. I mean, who doesn't love to be comfortable? Well, <laughs> so yesterday is an example. I had a hard day yesterday for a thousand different reasons. I get home, I get in my PJs. <laughs> I could have started a fire and like read this book I'm reading and had a glass of wine. That would have been lovely. Uh-huh. But instead I get a glass of wine and watch TV, uh-huh. you know? Now I think tonight I might go start a fire and, and read my book because yeah. it's becoming more and more interesting to me. Okay. And the older I get, the more I realize like, um, 
you know, I think it, we're so distracted by internet and YouTube and pop culture. And that's just our lot in life. And I, I think we're paying, I think we're paying the consequences of that mm. in anxiety and PTSD and, and different forms of, uh, I don't know, anxiety type. Um, you think it's amping it up? I think so. I mean, I, I don't remember my grandparents talking about being anxious or even my parents, you know, it's, Good point. I, it, I, I know I would love to see a, a complex study on anxiety and, and its origin and, I, you know, where it comes from and why. And mm. there's a theory that it's a flight and f it's our fight or flight yeah. response. Yeah. Uh, trying to be like active mm -hmm. in a, when we're not in a environment where we have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about now. So then are you trying to to transfer more of your time to reading? Oh, so I was thinking about how um, as I get older and as I mature, I realize that I need, I can't consume all the content out there. And it's not helping me that There's much. so much, yeah. Right? Yeah. TV programs. Like, how am I better as a person for having watched all every Game of Thrones episode? Like I, I might be good at trivia someday in the future, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really contribute to who I am. Mm -hmm. Versus reading a book that helps helps me understand my thoughts mm -hmm. and allows me to articulate my thoughts in a new way. Mm -hmm. That sounds way more uh, industrious to me. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to fight that lazy um, boy inside of me that just wants to be a glutton and eat rich foods and mm -hmm. drink wine and be lazy. Well, and that's just speaks to how you grew up too. So never being outside that. of your comfort yeah. zone I, is so important. Yeah. You know, and I like your thought that every day you should do something outside of your comfort zone mm -hmm. because you might find a new passion there mm -hmm. or a new uh, awareness about yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I, well, we've I've mentioned this before. I know we've talked about this several times, but I wish I had, I wish I had learned this lesson at thirteen. That's why I think your kids are so lucky because, uh, oh, man, the more I found out I didn't like, the more I found out what I did like. And if that had happened earlier, I know I love my journey and I love where I'm at now for sure. I don't regret anything. However, what kind of person would I be now if I'd started doing that at Sayla's age or David's age? Like, that's the key. I really think that's the key. So lots of random thoughts in my head and uh between I, now I'm and really, the retreat I, I I'm like going to topic a lot. I'm going to watch TV less, I'm going to read more books. Maybe I'll write a song on the guitar for the retreat. Shut up. Really? <laughs> Probably not. Oh my god. Probably not. Please do. Maybe I'll sing it at Jessica's wedding. Oh god. Our buyer's agent, Jessica. Our first Pickett Street wedding. Not technically our first. engaged. <laughs> the uh, first that we get to go over to, Over the I weekend. Guess. Yeah. And they've asked me to officiate the wedding. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's a whole new avenue of business, I think. She's so funny. I don't remember her asking me. She told me I was doing it. She said she asked you at the Pickett Street retreat, right? Which was back in like September. I may have been under the influence. <laughs> I don't remember seeing I think that. you're going to be fantastic. I think it's brilliant and... Yeah, I'm excited. I'm super excited. Well, we have some special plans already. Mm -hmm. Hashtag Wolfpack. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have to stop myself from howling. <laughs> I know. I want more audio drops. I want to be able to like. I know. I know. That's the next step here. We got to get us on YouTube and we got to get some audio drops. Right. I think I'm going to bring our friend in and see if he can help me. Get that going. Next steps. Yeah. Sounds good. That'd be good. Uh, real estate wise, uh, we're it's spring bumping right up against March. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna get busy. April and May are gonna be busy for us. Uh, March is the run up. We'll I have a couple listings <laughs> coming on soon, and it's crazy here in our market. Um. Multiple offers, 
purchase price over above list price mm -hmm. almost every time. And it's an exciting time to be <laughs> in real estate. It is. Challenging at times, but exciting nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Had to, well, we had a closing yesterday. We have a closing on Monday. Those are very successful closings in that the oh client, my gosh, yeah. client experience is paramount. Yeah. Uh, we have a buyer that's very happy. We have sellers that are very happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. both you and Jessica have really done some exceptional um, things in terms of negotiation and just working deals so that the client gets everything and more than what they thought was possible. Word. <laughs> so we're getting back into it and um, just nice check in with you. <laughs> just nice check in every once in a while and not have to whisper yeah, right? things off tones or no. clinkle yeah. our whiskey. Ice, ice against the glass. Yeah. No, just sit here casually and catch up with finally clickers. With five shots of espresso <laughs> coursing through my veins. Good lord! I feel like you know. How, I'm behind you with that. You know how you you can visualize your thoughts. You know, like as a sentence or whatever. Yes. Like maybe it's like you're reading like a ticker tape. Yeah. But when I'm on five shots of espresso, it's like a skipping rock. Like, <laughs> it, and it's, it's only hitting every other word. <laughs> I'm yeah, your I'm brain having... already moves so fast. I just don't know that espresso is really a benefit sometimes oh to you, gosh. or at least not more than two shots. Yeah. Because your brain already like a, is going. I feel like an overclocked computer right now. <laughs> I'm starting to whir and make noises. At least both your eyes are still opening. Man. <laughs> oh, I have a sleep study coming up. Did I tell you this? No. Yeah. Where at? Through who? At home. They do it at home now. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to it, but whatever. No, but if it means you feel better. Right. My and cousin, if... like I've had several people I've known have gone through it. They didn't get to sleep at home, but they're, though she said the way that she felt <laughs> in the following two weeks after she got better was like incredible. Yeah. No, if I feel better, I, I won't care. She was holding her breath. I forget how many times during her cycle of sleep. It was insanity. No, Jill, Jill's... It's like, I think Jill has PTSD from sleeping with me <laughs> as far as like, she says like, I'll have, yeah, I'll be like gasping for air or I'll. God, yeah, scary. Be like coughing and catch, like I didn't catch breathe for like a minute. Well, I have sinus arrhythmia, so I have an irregular heartbeat anyway. Oh. It's, it's like, it's so, it's crazy. It's not a regular, it's like, boom. Like, like it's, it's like playing the drums inside? It's like, boom, 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 boom. What? Boom, boom, boom. Of course you boom, do. Boom, 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 boom. Oh my god. Boom, boom. Yeah. So it's like, and so they don't. Doctors don't love that. And then if you don't breathe normally, <laughs> <laughs> they're not in love with that either. They don't love that either. So. So does and that involve I, like trying a, a, a CPAP for a night? I don't. Yeah. And they thankfully they have new ones that are low profile and like less cumbersome. But. Huh. I'll see. It'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Yeah. I'll probably get be less cranky. That's my guess. What if I'm so pleasant? I that I don't become in, I'm might no longer not know intimidating. What to do with you? Yeah, people are gonna be like, Jesse. And I'll be like, Oh <laughs> so great to see everyone. <laughs> I'm so not tired that I have love in my heart. <laughs> well, definitely feeling rested and not just for you, but for me as well. Oh, you are now. No, I mean, it definitely oh. helps you to be more pleasant when you're feeling rested. Maybe all of you us. need this, too. I, I just might. Because you go to, you keep going on vacations. Keep coming back <laughs> more tired. <laughs> I know. Oh, gosh. Where's your next vacation? I don't know, actually. I don't know, actually. I don't know. Um, I have a class coming up in Minneapolis next month. So if anyone knows <laughs> anyone... <laughs> who might have like an Airbnb they're not using <laughs> that night? Uh, let me know. I'd prefer to go alone. I'd prefer <laughs> prefer it if you weren't there. If you just let me use it, that'd be great. Oh my god! I don't know. Let's say like an hour radius. <laughs> like hook me up. Let me fly in your PJ. <laughs> PJ stands for private jet. Oh, thank you. Uh, let me find your PJ. And then, uh, yeah, that'd be great if I can just like use your place. <laughs> uh, but it, does, it won't really matter because it won't be enough time. 
But, you know, whatever keeps me sane. Oh, my God. It's pretty perfect. Oh. Well, it's time for Do some like barbecue. you like my impression of you? Yeah, it's pretty perfect. Yeah. Yeah. The funny thing is I've gotten so many offers from so many different people to, <laughs> to use their place. I have a girl who's offered her place in downtown Portland, Ocean Shores, yeah. Woodby Island. Uh, this was Idaho. Uh, yeah, it's hilarious. How to travel on a budget. <laughs> Start a podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. Ask people, how far can you go on a paperclip? <laughs> I'll trade you a paperclip. For, and it turns into a house. Well, you know what's funny is people are people do want to help. Do you people? know that story? Do you know the story of the guy that traded a paperclip for a house? No. There's well, a story? He started with a paperclip. And, but his idea, it was a thought experiment, but it, he actually did it. And it was like, okay, I'm going to start with a paperclip, and I'm going to trade for some a better an item of value, right? Could be a button, could be whatever. But he's going to negotiate with someone a trade. Shut up, really? I give you a paperclip, you give me something else. And if he keeps doing this perpetually over time, <clears throat> he'll end up getting someone to trade him a house for something. And it ended up working. So, like, it took five years or some number but eventually it's better than buying a house without spending money he went from a paperclip to a house Shut up yeah that's cool this is this is your <laughs> this travel is how i'm starting yeah yeah eventually well i have a place to stay in barcelona i have a place probably in paris just gotta work my way up welcome to paperclip <laughs> travel company <laughs> that's kind of cute you give us something of no value. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a night for free. Wow. You'll leave feeling unsatisfied. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, barbecue. Barbecue. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We know sometimes these are random episodes. We'll, we have focused episodes and we have random episodes. We and, do. And uh, It just kind of matches how we operate, I think, which yeah. is good. Yeah, good episode. This is a good one. <laughs> this is a good one. I feel really good about this one. I feel this really one. good about this one. <laughs> See you guys next time. <laughs>